Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you how to use the new Big Shot Impressions plates that Stampin' Up! has just come out with. And I am going to also show you how to do kind of a fun technique with your chipboard. And this is the So Tweet chipboard uh, that the, is also in the new catalog. And some of the techniques you can use with the Big Shot for that as well. I'll show you what I want to do with the background first. Um, if you can notice, inside this card there's actually a bit of a texture. I'm using the um, dots, the uh, small dots that are inside of the Stampin' Up! Um, stamp it up texture plates and I'm going to start with my multi-purpose platform which comes with every big shot and I'm going to open that up to tab one so that's the first page and then I'm going to take my impressions plate and I'm going to put it straight down on that. Now depending on how thick you want that embossed texture to be when you're done if you want it to be really raised up you would probably want to put a little shim of a piece of cardstock underneath before you did this. I'm kind of looking for a gentle background on this one so I'm going to just put my plate there. And now I'm going to take my piece of Kiwi Kiss cardstock and I'm going to line it up with the dots just to make sure that it comes through pretty straight because I don't want people to get dizzy looking at my dots if they're all off I'm going to take my silicone and put that on top, silicone rubber, and then my textures impressions pad goes on the very top. I'm going to take that whole sandwich, and you don't need the plastic clear plates for this one, you just need what I showed you. And I'm going to run it through the big shot, and out on the other side comes my embossed paper. Just like that. Okay, so I'm going to put that to this side for this for right now. And before I go any farther, I'm going to take my ribbon and sticky tape. And I'll just say right now, um, when I'm adhering ribbon, I generally always use sticky tape because I find that it gives me the most um, consistent line. And if I use glue, then it tends to be a little bit bubbly on my ribbon, and I don't like that. And open that up. And this is the new ribbon, one of the new ribbon originals, and I'm in love with it. I so love polka dot ribbon to begin with, so... I was pretty thrilled when this that came out. Me my background. And now I'm just going to go ahead and adhere that to my card because I'm pretty much done with the background images. Just like this. And I always take a couple of extra seconds and make sure that it's exactly matted as cleanly as I can. I think that really makes a difference in your finished cards if you just take a second to make sure that that matting is exactly right. And you also notice that I'm actually a big fan of a 3 8 inch mat. I don't generally use the quarter inch unless I'm using it along with a 3 8 inch. So if you're wondering why my cards look like they have a little bit of a skinnier line, that's because I do use a 3 8 inch. It's a little bit harder because the lines are smaller, but I like it. This is the Scallop Circles, um, Scallop number 2 die. There you go. And I'm going to go ahead and take the bigger circle of the scallop inside that. I'm going to sandwich it between my plates. You can see mine are quite well used. People ask me how if they should be all etched like this. They definitely should be. Um, mine are still actually have lots of use left in them. You'll notice when they need to be replaced when they stop making uh, clean, clean images. Mine are get used probably thousands of times before I need to actually replace them. So. And so now I'm in my sandwich. I'm going to go ahead and put that through the big shot. And that gives me my scallop circle. Now I'm going to teach you a really cool thing you can do with the new circle cutter. I'm going to take my measuring. I, I always keep one of these little cheap measuring rulers around because, you know, it kind of helps me with matting and stuff. And I'm going to measure to myself how large this scallop circle is. And it's a little bit less than um, three inches. It's probably about two and seven eighths or so. And the really cool thing is that the new um, circle cutter that just came out in the new catalog, you can actually say exactly how big you want the diameter of your circle to be. So I'm just going to put this down here. This is a glass mat. You can use a cutting, a regular cutting mat with this. Um, you probably won't get the same results, but you know, if you want to try and make that worth your if you don't want to buy the glass mat right away, then that might be a good option for you. And I'm going to use my Dotto, and I'll tell you, it does leave a little bit of a residue on your glass mat, but after you're done, you can actually remove it just by rubbing it off if you want, or even a little bit of Windex or something will take it off. And I'm just going to give myself the corners, and maybe a little bit on the edge here, a little bit of sticky, just so that this doesn't move around, because I don't want to have it slide on me while I'm cutting. I'm going to put it right in the middle of my, my thing there, my glass mat. And then I'm going to put the this right down there. And then this is the the cutter, the cutting blade. It comes with a little guard that you slide off. And then you just slide this right into the hole, just like that. 
And now I'll tell you, when I was playing with this, I was really digging in and pushing it down, and I and I realized that I kept catching on the paper when I did that because I was really overpowering it. It doesn't really need that much. It just needs a light touch. And you're just going to make a circle by sliding it around like that and lifting it up, and you're all done. And you can actually make yourself rings out of this um, that are super cute um, just by moving it up, you know, very small increments. You can get it as big as a six inch circle or as small as a one inch circle with this machine. It's, it's just awesome. That was one of my favorite new purchases out of the new catalog. Okay, so now I have my circle and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a background image just for fun. And I'm gonna use a background stamp and show you guys one of the techniques that I use for inking up my background stamps. I hear a lot of people um, complain about uh, not being able to get a really clean image because they stamp up their ink up their background stamp like this. I actually don't do that. I use a brayer. And what I do is I ink up my, my ink pad and my brayer and then I just run it right over the top of my large stamp pad and that gives me a very even texture. Now on this particular project, I don't want it to have a very distinct um, background. And this is the polka dot stamp, the background stamp. I'm actually gonna stamp that off and just make it a little bit lighter. I'm gonna stamp it off twice. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And if you were really concerned about this, the other thing you could do is you could put it straight down and then brayer over the top once and that'll give you a nice clean image. But that gives me the background I'm looking for. Put that aside. I'm going to take a little sponge dauber, which I have, I go through tons of these because I just love them, ink it up with a little bit of ink, and then just maybe drag it around the edges a bit so it doesn't have that kind of a hard um, white edge. just want to cover that up a bit. And then I'm going to put away my, that for now, hard, just like that. Um, there are actually eight pieces to each of these designs in here, so you've got lots to make lots of different cards with. So if you make a really cute card and you want to make several, you're set. Or, or if you're just afraid of using up the only piece you have of that, you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to pull out the pieces to the, the uh, pair. And there's four sheets of this. You can see it comes with lots of different images. Okay, and then when I start with any kind of chipboard, I always actually go through and just kind of sand off the edges to make sure that they're nice and clean. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my little pear image. I'm gonna take my multi-purpose pad, but this time, because this is chipboard, I'm gonna open up all the tabs. So I'm just down to that big, thick plastic on the bottom. But then the steps remain the same, and that is that I'm going to take my damask uh, pattern. I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna take my chipboard upside down, so it's facing down, and put it on one of those images that are so cute in there. And I'm gonna put my silicon on top, and then I'm going to take my impressions pad and put it over that. And that gives me my sandwich again. And I'm going to run that through my Big Shot. Celebration is just starting right now. And it's a great time for you to purchase your Big Shot because you're going to get some extra stamp sets with it. In fact, you're going to get just about everything inside that little um, Celebration catalog. So, uh, as well as um, I have my own specials that are going on. You can check out on my blog at the stampinggrounds.typepad.com. And uh, you can actually get a series of 10 classes if you'd like with that for free. So it basically gets you, when you look at everything, you're getting your big shot for free. Um, and you can look at my blog for more information about that. Okay, so here is my little I don't know if you can see, but it's nice and impressed now. It's got a great texture to it. And there's a couple of different ways that you can ink this up, and I'll show you both of them real quick. First, I'm going to ink up that sponge dauber again and just go ahead and rub it all over my pear image. That gives you that kind of a look, a nice gentle look. But maybe if you're looking for a little bit more of a distressed image, you can actually put it straight onto your ink pad and just drag it across. And those raised images are going to really pick up the ink nicely. Remember, this is going to fade a bit too, but um, that gives you a really distinct image. You can see that. So pretty. So we'll put that to the side for now. And I'll show you another way that you can actually um, put color onto your chipboard. I'm going to take the Stampin' Write markers, and I'm just going to go ahead and color them. So this is the old olive. I just And there we go. Here is my completed pear card. I hope that you enjoyed my tutorial today and please visit my website and leave a comment if you uh, enjoyed this and uh, I will look forward to teaching you something again soon. Have a great day.